All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we are going to be installing TrueNAS Scale on this Ugreen NAS right here. And this is something I've been really excited to do because I love TrueNAS Scale. However, TrueNASs are not cheap to buy directly from iX Systems. And having a pre-built option out there that just has everything kind of already built out for you, especially with something that has eight bays, is not easy to find, especially for the price point. One awesome thing about these Ugreens that I really like out of them is the fact that they actually just let you get into BIOS. So that means that we can do whatever we want with this system. We're gonna be installing TrueNAS Scale on a separate NVMe drive underneath. That way, I'm not actually going to be deleting out the existing operating system, so I still can switch over to Ugreen OS because I will be doing more demos in this thing. By the way, for those wondering, Ugreen did send this to me for free as well as these eight drives that are in it. No strings attached or anything like that, but they did send this to me for free, but I also have bought one of their reviews with our own money. So we're gonna be installing it on the system right here, and I've already gone ahead and installed TrueNAS Scale as an ISO file on this device right here. I'm assuming if you're somebody who's doing this, you already understand how to create bootable media. If you're not super familiar with creating boot media, you can download something called Blanca Etcher, dump it on there. But in general, I would recommend having a decent understanding of getting into BIOS, creating boot media, and things like that before going in and doing this, just because this is outside of Ugreen's supported configuration. So if you mess up, at most, you're going to be able to talk to people on forums and see what's going on. And so definitely just don't jump in and do this unless you kind of are familiar with what you're doing. There is a built-in drive in here as well that stores the Ugreen boot media. If you wanted to, you could actually override that drive or completely remove it. I'm still planning on doing some reviews on this thing, so we're not going to be doing that today because it is unfortunately not accessible without taking this whole thing apart. So I'm going to wait to do that. But what I have done is I've installed a NVMe SSD down in the bottom. Finally, you need a keyboard and mouse, and for this we're going to be using JetKVM so we can all see it together. However, one downside with JetKVM in this configuration is it starts up and gets power from the actual Ugreen, and so it is not going to be able to get us into BIOS very easily. So I've plugged in a keyboard already to it, so I can do that. But we're going to go ahead and jump into all that stuff right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up to the HDMI port on the back here, and we are going to plug in our ISO file with our boot media. And we're going to be spamming Control F12 to get into our BIOS setup so we can go through and do all these things. All right, so now we're all ready to go. Traditionally, you would probably just have a regular video monitor out here. I'm going to do this on Jet KVM just because it's going to be easier for me to record off of. And what I'm gonna do is I've got this physical keyboard here. That way I can be spamming Control F12 and get into that setup menu by the time the Jet KVM boots because the Jet KVM is getting its power from the Ugreen. So by the time it were to boot, I was already ending up in Ugreen OS. Find the power button, I'm gonna turn it on. And then all the while on my keyboard, I'm just blindly going to be spamming Control F12. This is the BIOS key to get into setup for it. And I'm just going to keep spamming it because eventually I am going to see that the KVM is up, which it is now. And just like that, I was able to get into the setup menu right here. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is disable a couple things. First off, we want to disable this thing called Watchdog. Watchdog is pretty much there so that if you green OS crashes, it will automatically reboot itself. I'm not worried about TrueNAS crashing, so we don't need Watchdog on. And so then after that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into boot. And we are going to come in and disable our boot options. And right here, there are two NVMe slots on this system that we have access to. Really, there's a third hidden underneath that I could get to if I took this thing apart. And if you see right here, the two options are actually disabled. So 
Ugreen has disabled the built-in slots that we have access to to boot off of because they don't want this thing accidentally booting in the wrong order, right? They are selling you a package that only boots into Ugreen OS and that is going to be on key three. What we're gonna do is we are going to disable key three and instead enable keys one and two. And this is only necessary if you're using your own boot drive. If you were wanting to overwrite Ugreen's OS, you could do that. And unfortunately, that watchdog timer ran out by the time this actually ran. So I actually have to go through and redo this. I'm gonna redo all of those settings really quickly. You've got 180 seconds, but you will end up running out of time if you're talking to camera. So what we're doing there is we're just disabling those two options and hitting save. Just gonna go ahead and kill the power. So now I'm just going to really quickly run through those settings. I'm spamming my control F2 again. Essentially what happened there is Watchdog, that thing we were talking about where it waits 180 seconds before force rebooting, it was enabled. And so even though I had set it off, I hadn't saved the settings yet. So 180 seconds after we got into the BIOS, it's like, well, this must have crashed, this is hung, and it stopped us. So what we're doing is I'm just spamming that exact same Control F12 again. And now very quickly, I'm gonna hit enter setup and not spend so much time telling you what I'm doing. Just going to enable boot one and two and then hit save changes and reset. Since you that last setting on disabling boot from that drive is only necessary if you're planning on not overriding that media. If you want to take this case apart, you can actually just stick your own NVMe drive in that same slot, have no trouble. Or you can also go the route I'm going and basically just adding your own, in which case you do need to disable those things. So now I'm going to go ahead and boot into the Debian installed media. And now we're just going to get to install TrueNAS scale. So if you've not installed TrueNAS Scale before, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna choose Install. Now we're going to choose what to install it to. We see we've got these a bunch of these four terabyte drives we can install it to, but we really want this Iron Wolf drive right here. This is the drive I manually installed myself. If I were to choose this guy right here, you can see this is the 120 gig boot drive that was included with the Ugreen. Right now, if you overwrite that, there's no getting it back. So if you choose to go that route, make sure you're done with the Ugreen OS because right now there's no way to recover that. But now we're gonna go ahead and go through the first time setup. I'm just going to have it set to use the TrueNAS admin as create and create a password here. So what we just did there is we created a password for the default user account of TrueNAS underscore admin. This replaces the old school root account that was previously there. And what it is right now doing is it is installing that entire OS on here. And that is it. It has gone ahead and installed that NVMe drive. And because we swapped around the boot orders, it should actually just boot directly into TrueNAS scale. We'll see if that happens. Hit reboot system. And we are going to pull out our boot drive. And now we can see right here, it rebooted and it is automatically booting us into TrueNAS scale. I'm not gonna touch anything on here, so we just watch it do its thing. So now, just like that, we can see it has pulled an IP of 10.30.0.221 and we're just gonna go to that and we are already installed into TrueNAS scale. We're gonna use that TrueNAS admin and the password we set up there. And we are just able to be in TrueNAS scale now. What we're gonna go ahead and do is now build our forest storage pool. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna in here and hit create pool. And we'll set this thing up as a RAID Z2 seven wide. So you can see there's eight drives in here, but actually one of them was dead on arrival. So we only have the seven and we are going to go ahead and just build our storage pool. 
which is just a single RAID Z2 array. You will see there's this unassigned disk right here that's 120 gigabytes. Remember, if you want to use that for anything, and if you start using it, you are no longer going to be able to go back. Right now, it's really easy to go back. All we have to do is undo that very simple disable of the actual boot options. So we just re-enable NVMe Drive 3, and it'll boot right on in, no problems whatsoever. However, remember, TrueNAS is using ZFS, so you're not gonna be able to swap your data back and forth between the two OSs. Each of them requires a format just like we did there. So it's not like you can just go back and forth, but it's a great way of like starting and testing out before you're ready to completely commit. Just remember, if you do override that drive, there's no going back, at least this day and age. You could probably get a clone somewhere and get that drive, and maybe one day they add a install media, but until then, you're not gonna be able to do it. And we're just in TrueNAS scale now. It was just that easy. I'm actually planning on having a new complete beginner guide to TrueNAS scale. Now that I have a really nice and easy box to deploy this on, I cannot tell you how happy I am to have something that is consumer ready to purchase, took five, 10 minutes to install the actual OS on that can run TrueNAS. I love TrueNAS, but building your own hardware is hard, especially if you're not used to that style. And so it's hard to recommend clients be able to do that, even if ZFS would serve them really, really well. Having a very powerful hardware option, pre-built, ready to go, that is just that easy to install whatever OS you want on there, makes this a really compelling option for people who are looking for a backup target. This thing probably is going to end up at my house and is going to be the offsite backup for my entire TrueNAS scale build because it has such a great form factor. And with 30 terabyte drives that you can buy now, you can get insane amounts of storage in this thing with eight drive bays, along with two NVMe SSD caches and 64 gigabytes of RAM makes this thing a very compelling, very powerful option out there for certain use cases. All right, that's pretty much it. Definitely stay tuned because I'm planning on that new TrueNAS scale guide that's gonna go over all the setup and options here. But if you're already used to TrueNAS scale, you can just get right up and running. If you have any other things you want me to add into that TrueNAS scale tutorial that is coming down the pipeline, put those down in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one, bye.